Good morning. It is a little frigid this morning. We're looking at negative 10, negative 11 degrees. It was hovering right around zero and negative two till about three this morning. Then she dropped like a rock. No wind yet. That's a, that's a bonus. We're going to try to catch a muskie today. We're going to try a little harder. Hopefully the bait survived the night. I got it inside of a snowbank and had the aerators running as long as the batteries didn't die. Negative 10 is pretty cold. Breakfast this morning, gonna throw some bacon, some potatoes, and probably a couple eggs if, if they're not too frozen in the pan, then drive those into me so I have something in my belly there for, for the cold. And then I'm gonna run down lake and set up like on an edge and see if we can't get a muskie to bite. I switched over gear last night. I tied mostly new leaders, so I got four four wire leaders with two aught hooks, a little bit smaller hook, and I'll run some shiners down and small suckers, and I'll still run one big smelt down on the big stuff with a bigger hook and on floral carbon. Whoa. Holy cow, that's beautiful. <laughs> Temperature's dropping pretty quick as that sun's coming up. We're looking at about 18 below right now. It was 17 when I left camp. Not sure what I got for water over here. There, there was a weed line here years ago. My buddy was telling me about where he always caught musky when he was open water fishing. Well, minus the ice, we got about five to six foot. That should be good. We'll set that right there. Let's see if the bait made it through the night. Oh yeah, geez, they're all alive. Great, that was a surprise. Almost all alive. 
All right, there's a shiner. We're gonna try shiners today, for the most part. Where's my hook? Where's my hook? It's alive. Shiner to wire on this one. Beautiful, we're set. All right, this one's gonna get a sucker. Pretty natural bait for up here. All these bodies of water have suckers coming in and out. Had a little bit more water on this one. So far I've set six, five, and then this one's closer to nine. If your line, if your line ever is frozen inside the reel, peel out a bunch of it and put it back on. That way the fish can swim freely till you get there. If he feels that ice, 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 every time that reel goes around and that tension, he's gonna drop it pretty quick. With these heritage, I can put the reel all the way to the side of the ice without touching any ice and have that big area to chip out when it's 18 to 20 below. All right, we are set up. Two shiners, two suckers, and a sea smelt. Gonna run five traps for now. Oh, oh looks like we got a flag already. That, uh, that sucker's up. Let's go see if it was the bait or if it's actually a fish. Hope it's a fish. Oh yeah, she's spooling. She's rolling. She's rolling, folks. We got a chance. Got him. Oh, nice. Nice head shakes. Pretty big fish, feels like. Wow. Oh man, haven't seen them, but feels all right. Man, they fight so hard. They fight way harder than pike. Oh yeah. Not even that big. He's fighting like he's huge. He's gotta get his head started. Alrighty, <laughs> we are on the board. Woo! That was worth a six hour drive for sure. All right. I'm gonna get my catch bag ready. Keep him in the water for a second. Yeah, that wire leader's a deal, it's the way they fight, too. Got my easy out, hopefully they're not frozen. Got my spreaders. And just in case, got the tweezers. Those are frozen. Okay. All right, let's get that fish. Show them to you. Hooks right there. Roof of the mouth, really. Wow, nice. I'll show you that musky. <laughs> Main musky right there, guys. Got him. We're on the board. Finally. That was worth a six hour drive for that, for sure. And all day yesterday. All right, nice one. Wicked pretty fish. Oh my god, different color. Let's get him back and see if we can get another one. Oh, there we go. Nice. 
Yeah, I think those smaller hooks helped. Wouldn't have landed him with fluorocarbon. Definitely the wire's the answer. And the water's not clear at all here, so there's no real need for fluoro. That one ate a sucker that was about, oh, five inches. Nothing huge. Pretty sure they eat a lot of suckers up here. Let's get that reset. I'll see if I can get another sucker to show you. I didn't bring many of these suckers because I was planning on catching them all in the sea smelt. But, <laughs> all right, this is a little bit smaller one. There he is. That was cool. That was good timing. As soon as I got that last trap set. All right, I'm gonna peel back some line so that doesn't happen. If it freezes to the reel and they're making a run and they feel that, they're gonna drop it if they're not gut hooked. Now everything I wind back on should be loose when the fish takes it. Plus everything here. If your line has a bunch of ice on it, you can take that off with your fingernails. There'll be less drag and at the end of the day, if you do dry your reels out, if it has all that ice around it, it's just a big old loose mess in the morning. All right, got him on the board. All right, so we got a little bit of wind now. It's 18 below zero. I just went over and checked on the thermometer and the wind's picking up a little bit and where I'm set up, it's definitely gonna eat all the wind. So I brought the otter over and I'm gonna set that up and try out that new little heater I got too. This is the XT Pro Cabin X over. We'll see, <laughs> but it should be able to keep me out of the wind at least. And uh, once I get set up, I might pull one of these traps and then fish a line right in the shack. Probably fish a live shiner on a jig rod. That'd be kind of fun if I could get one to go. One 
more inch. Nice. Looking good. If nothing else, she makes for a heck of a windbreak. Got him. Oh yeah, doesn't feel huge. Man, these things got a lot of fight to them. It's crazy how hard they fight for their size. Feels all right. Shaking his head like a little guy. There we go. Nice. All right, he's got some length to him. Man, they're just all muscle. Let's try to grab onto one of these things. Holy cow. Yeah, right there. Okay. Another nice one. See you later, big gator. Catch bag. I got my measuring device. At least one set of spreaders, grippers, pliers. Another set of spreaders, the bakers, forceps, and a scale, just in case. So that's what's in my catch bag. I can't get over how hard these fish fight for 30 inches. That thing fought like a 10 pound pike. feels heavy. That's on the sea smelt. He was just sitting under the hole. Wow, I felt pretty good. I think this is on fluorocarbon. I better be a little more careful. This one ate that sea smelt. Man, I can't get over how hard these things fight, pound for pound. Ah, oh, he's just working that fluorocarbon back and forth. I don't like it. All right, we got him tired out. We got him. Nice. Power. Right. one there, guys. All right, another good one. I'm gonna get him back. It starts to get cold.
nice. See you later, big gator. All right, that's three musky. I am back in the shack. That wind is pretty rude right now. It's right out. It's straight up balmy out there. She's blowing straight sideways, blowing like a sieve, and it is pretty cold. We got some well below zero temperatures. Last I checked, it was 18 below. I don't know if it warmed up or, or if it got colder, to be honest with you, because once that wind started, it just got pretty rude. I am in the shack here. I have four traps set and a jig rod set up now with the pan optics. I got a shiner down there. That's that shiner sitting at about six and a half, seven feet. I'll move him just so you can see him. There he goes. And I got that thing. He's swimming all around. I got him rigged on a treble hook with wire leader. So should be able to get something pegged if he comes flying in. And then I'm just running my bail wide open right here and the line's kind of stuck in the snow. So when he hits, it's gonna be a mess. <laughs> Hopefully we get a bite in here. And I'll keep an eye on those four traps out there. But I'm stoked that I got four musky already. Three musky already. And they fight crazy hard. I can't get over how hard they fight. They're like, all of them have been like 29 to 32 inches. And they're fighting like they're 10 pound pike. I'm going to drink some coffee. Where is it? I'm going to drive that coffee right into me right there. Mm. That is good on a cold day having... Some nice hot coffee and knowing I got pretty much a full thermos sitting there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, it's happening. Did he eat it? I think he ate it. Oh my god, did he not eat that? Did he eat that? I don't know. God, how did he not eat that? Oh, we just had a muskie come in. Did not eat. Ah. That was exciting. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That was as exciting as I've ever been watching a electronics. I'm being quiet because it's only six foot down. Maybe he didn't like that treble hook, I don't know. He took a shot at it. Oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes, here he comes. Come on. GoPro's always messing up, I'm telling you. Gotta take the battery out, reset this one, it'll froze up. All right, it's about 1045, temperature still hovering at about 18 degrees below zero. Got a pretty good wind poking through, but it's not bad in here. You know, this little heater I bought, it's adequate. I wouldn't give it any more than that. You're never going to be overheated with it because I don't think it can pump out enough heat. But for a single thing of propane and for its size, I guess it's not bad for a situation like this. It fits in here pretty nicely. I probably would have bought the, the smaller buddy heater over that thing, I guess, thinking back on it now, but it'll work. It's, it's doing its job today. It's keeping things pretty well from freezing in here. This thing's got 1200, uh, what do they say? D denier, 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 1200 insulation. So it's a little bit heavy and I've been in here on a, sunny day where with no heat source and just smoked right out of here uh, for the last trip of last year. So three muskies on the ice, got one on a shiner, one on a sucker, and one on a great big smelt. Two came on wire leaders, one came on fluorocarbon. I had to retie that fluorocarbon. He had it chewed up pretty good. I've had one muskie on the screen down here on the on the pan optics, that was exciting. But man, am I glad I got those three muskies. I thought I was gonna have to change the name of the channel to Joe Holland Camping. Fishing yesterday was tough. I could have just been a bad day. You know, maybe I didn't have my gear rigged right. I don't know. I caught that one today on that same fluorocarbon with a great big hook and the sea smelt. So <laughs> that's fishing for you. You know, you always have those questions and always trying to figure it out, get a little bit better at it each day. High flyer time. Got a flag. It's pretty close. I'm gonna take the 
sled because it's got all my gear in it. Might have been that fish I just saw on the fan optics unit. Where are we? Okay. Over here. Try to block the wind. Might have just flipped him. Oh no, he's there. Ha, he came right at me. Whoa, whoa. Boy, they're, they just sit and eat. They don't go far when they eat. This is a small one. But it's pretty. Oh my gosh, is he pretty. Wait right there. Pretty easy. Pretty easy when you get the right tools, guys. Give him a dip. Take a look at him. We'll get him right back. Look at the colors on that guy. It's just a different kind of green you don't ever see in nature. That catch bag is a dry bag made by, by Gambler Lures. It's on their website, but it's a dry bag. Goes over your shoulder, fits pretty nice. Did he eat it? I think he ate it. Guys, I think he ate it. I think we got a musky on. He got it now. Oh my God, eat it. This is exciting. Did he eat it? I think he ate it, I think he ate it. I'm gonna hit him. Got him, got him. Got him guys, got a musky on the jig rod. I don't know how good that hook set was because I had my drag loose. Oh boy, we're gonna find out. He's set now. Uh, get out of that jacket. Oh boy. I don't think he's very big. No, he's a hammer handle. <laughs> oh, he's got some messed up jaw. Wow, he's got a weird, weird jaw. Huh. That's ugly. Got him. Look at that jaw. It's like poking through. We'll have to fix that for him. It's like broken or something. Huh. Well, my catch bag's outside, so do I trust to set him down in the hole? Don't go anywhere. Sweet! Can't believe I got one on the jig rod. Got it. Pretty easy. All right. There he is. He's a 
probably 26 inch or so. Let's get him back down there with his chin and all. There he is. The swim of shame. <laughs> yes. All right. I'd say that calls for a cup of coffee. First muskie I ever got on jig rod right there. That was number one, two, three, four, five. That was number five for the day. Smallest one, so that was a good test. Little tester to have on the jig rod. But nice little celebratory cup of coffee. It's pretty balmy out there, I will say that. This little heater's doing a little bit more than I thought it was doing. I don't think you'll ever get too hot with one of these, but it is working, so I gotta give it credit for that. That bait was up in the water column pretty decent, and he shot in, and I put GoPros on here, left and right, so I can get it on the panoptic still when he missed it, or I don't know what happened. You know, the bait comes right to life whenever there's fish around, but that was pretty awesome. I've since tightened my drag a little bit so I can snap a pretty good hook set on him. She'd be hot. Oh. Not sure what just happened there. I was messing around with the other GoPro. I think I got a hit. Yeah, I think I think that muskie right there is eating my shiner right now. We're gonna find out. There he goes. Let's find out. Got him. Yeah, it was a muskie. Oh, that's a decent one. Easy fight too. <laughs> All right, that was quick. Yeah, easy, 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 easy. Easy fight, because he didn't know what hit him. All right, all right, all right, all right. Pandemonium in here. You wait there, I'm gonna go back out and get my kill bag. That was a bit of a cluster. I think he might have got my braid in his mouth because it just snipped me off. Wow, yeah. Definitely what happened. Shoot. That sucks for that fish. Bummer. Never like seeing that. All right, we're running out of shiners pretty quick, but we'll get that one down there. I just made a new rig, got it all rigged up. They're coming in pretty hot and heavy on the jig rod all of a sudden. All right, we're all set up. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm higher up in the water column. I'm keeping that bait about six, seven foot down. I'm over 10 foot here. So whereas my, on my traps, I kind of set a little closer to bottom. Could be, I can't believe only a foot's gonna make that much difference, but never know. We got a high flyer. Trap number four. Ooh. Well, I know one thing I forgot was my skimmer. Back in the shack. That's all right. We'll be moving we'll to a... Jeez, we'll have to boot the trap. I think he knows we're here now. Let's see if he's still there. 
Doesn't feel like anything yet. There he is. Man, he's sitting right back at the hole. Oh, nice one. Nice one. Get him in that hole. All right. Out of the line. Nice fish. Oh, I just snowed his gills. That's not good. Ooh, just barely hooked. Got it. All right. Get them wet. What a pretty fish. He's ready. Nice. All right, that is number seven for the day. What a difference a day makes. We are back, folks, we're back. And we're catching fish. We're catching musky. I can't get over how hard these things fight. It's pretty amazing. All right, I gotta get a bait and get that gear rig re-rigged. I'm gonna put the reel back in the water just so it doesn't freeze up. And I think I'm gonna throw on a big old sea smelt on this one. We're pretty well, oh, another high flyer. Pretty sure I got another high flyer, so I'm not gonna mess around too long here. Let's get a six. You look, you look ready. So these are tank smelt, just tanks. I go up by the dorsal between the dorsal fin and the eye. Go down there. Down. So I'll show you guys how that bait band works. There's the bait band right there on the bottom of my trap. I grab a fold of line, tuck it up in, and then kind of, if you work it into a corner, it's got a little bit more pressure on it. Then you could just set your reel like normal. Now the only thing that bait is pulling against now is that rubber band. He's not pulling against the flag or your tripping mechanism. We're set. Let's go see if we got another one.
got him. Got him. Oh, look at that. Jumped right out. <laughs> he surprised me. That thing came flying out. I'm just about to put my head over the hole and take a look. There he is, guys, going back. Nice. Oh, my hands never get cold. They're chilly right now. Two fish. Two fish, both wet. We got some pretty, pretty nasty temperatures right now. Well, while I'm at it, let me throw that baby back down. The shiner was still alive a second ago. It's just about noon right now. Eight muskies on the ice, crazy. Two of them jigging, had another one come into the jig. Every flag has been a fish, we got no misses. So they're eating today, as opposed to yesterday. What did we miss in here? Pretty toasty in here. I won't give it that. Looks like nothing. Well, we just passed 50 hours since I'd seen another person. Last people I saw were down in town when I stopped to get some supplies. This is pretty remote up here. There's not many people up here and Certainly not this time of year. You gotta really, you gotta have a purpose to be here in mines to try to catch some musky and put together a pretty cool video. It reminds me when I used to trap, I used to trap north and, and east of here and I'd go long spells alone without eyeing another person. And I remember the longest that I ever went without seeing another person. Now when I say see another person, I mean lay eyeballs on another person. You know, there's been times when you're home and you might be sick or stay home from school or after your adult age, you might get sick and, and spend a day alone or something like that. If that, if even that, but you might still see cars go by or see somebody out your window or, or somebody might come to the door. It was pretty rare to go more than 24 hours without seeing another person for the average person. And I remember the longest stretch I think I went was a little bit over two weeks without seeing another person. And I remember I started talking to myself out loud and returning the, <laughs> returning the conversation. And I said, well, it's time to go to town. So I remember I drove downtown and got resupplied and refueled. And I think that poor lady that was working the gas station, I probably talked her ear right off because I hadn't talked to anybody for a couple weeks, but that's pretty good long stretch. Other, t other times I've gone you know, I used to I used to trap for three straight months up in the woods and, and head in alone. And sometimes I'd have some visitors and sometimes you'd just see a logger and wave. Sometimes you'd see another hunter. Rarely you'd even see another trapper and wave. So you'd at least lay an eyes on people. And then, then there were the long stretches when you didn't see anybody. All right, I just ran back to base camp to get a couple supplies because it slowed down. In those few minutes that I was gone, we got a high flyer. Let's go see what it is. This one was that smelt I just put on the jack trap. Slow going, like it could either be the smelt or it could be a big old staven musky. Every once in a while, those a big.
big bait can pull it out of the big bait bands, but for the most part, they don't. None of these muskie have made big runs. They've all gone to the side and circled back, really. Yeah, there, there's like slack line right there. Slack. Total slack. Now we're getting There's a fish. Ooh. Oh. Did he come back or is he? Did he drop it? Oh, he dropped it. Lost him. Lost him. I had him for a minute. Gorgeous bait. Gorgeous bait right there. I've caught Brookie smaller than that bait. Well, I just muffed that fish. <laughs> it's hard with uh, with big bait on fish that aren't really running. They're stopping, coming back around the hole. So you don't know if they have it or not. So I don't know. I, I know I did the right thing there. I just didn't have it. I had the hook in them for a second, but it popped out. That happens. You know, one out of eight, it's not too bad. But I'm getting, I'm back set up here. I ran back and grabbed some crackers and some cheese. And some what's this? pepperoni. And then I also grabbed that book too that I've been reading because it slowed down a little bit and the conversation wasn't getting wasn't getting anywhere, so I figured I'd get a book and read it. This one's been pretty good. I'm almost halfway through. Well no, I'm over halfway through it already. It's called The Penobscot Man by Fanny Hardy Ekstrom. Well, it's not the worst lunch. Pretty good tasting, really. Well, she's off to the side a little bit. Let's see. I think there's one there. Yep, there's one there. Feels all right, but they all do, really. Oh, got hung up. Must be the swivel. Yep, oh boy, that was the swivel. We got a fighter here, folks. The swivel burnt right into the ice. This one might have a little size to him. There's another one. Not overly big. Pretty good. All right, probably close to 30 inches. Give him a dip. That pretty. Nice. 
Number nine. That's quite a bit of ice building for one day. I'm staying active on these traps. That's uh, that's over an inch right there for sure. It is a chore to get that frable top to lock down, but it's really important. If you don't, water spills out and cold gets in and freezes inside. All right, it's pickup time. It's getting really cold out here. The wind's still moving, but it's dropped a lot on the temperature scale. So I'm gonna go around and pick up. I moved the bait inside the otter with the heater on to see if that'll stay alive. I might just leave it right set up overnight. He's gonna set a good low tonight. I can promise you guys that one. I don't know what the temp is right now. Negative 14. Negative 14 right now. So there's no way we're not hitting 20 below for sure. And maybe we'll see even more once that sky turned clear like that. You could see that front over there kind of got pushed out with all that wind today. And now we have like this clear bluebird sky. And being up here a bunch, I've learned to read the sky and the weather change and the patterns. It's gonna be cold, I can promise you that. We're gonna, we'll be, we'll be below 20. So after I picked up the traps, I ran out to the truck, grabbed a couple blankets and a auger battery for tomorrow. Yeah, the first auger battery did good. I got two days on it. A lot of holes, you know, a lot of holes when you're jumping, hole hopping and doing the panoptics. We're in 20 to 25 inches of ice at least. A lot of ice here, good hard black ice. So pretty happy with what that battery gave me. Actually really happy with what it gave me. And now I've, I have uh, two other spares. So I brought one in, left the other in the truck and I am pretty well done for the day. Although it's so beautiful out here right now and the wind stopped. I almost don't want to go in. I think I might just stay out here and even though the sun has set, the colors are just amazing. They probably don't show up on this little camera, but over here I have purple with pink on top of it. Out there it's like a nice pink and yellow mix. And then over here we got a beautiful yellow and, and gold over here. It makes all the spruce trees look jet black, all the fir trees black. This, uh, all the banks of this lake are lined with birch trees and alders it looks like. 
because not too many years ago it was 10 foot higher and almost double the size it is now with surface surface acreage there was a dam there was a dam down on this end of the lake right here they used to they built a dam and dug a canal that could get all the logs in this area down to Millinocket, down to the mill. And they dug a pretty considerable canal to get to the Penobscot River, I guess. And then eventually they just kind of let the dam, after they stopped logging, they let the dam go fall in. And when it fell in, the lake lowered 10 feet, but the banks are all like the same around the whole lake. It's pretty neat. You don't see that very often. Normally, it's the opposite. You have giant, big, old growth trees because that's a buffer zone that loggers are not allowed to cut near a body of water within like 100 or 200 feet of the water, depending on, on what the rules are for that area. But we have the opposite here. It's all young, small growth, probably from flooding it and raising it, lowering it, raising it, lowering it and sending the logs down, they probably stripped a ton of the topsoil that used to be on the shore. And there hasn't been a lot of growth coming back. I mean, there's a lot of little growth, but nothing big yet. It's pretty neat. And then you see like which trees and which stuff comes in first. I'm sure this, the edges of this place was just a raspberry haven for the first 10 years, raspberry bushes wild raspberries grow like crazy they just show up out of nowhere and it's the first thing to grow into a spot and then you get your alders and then a bunch of the softwoods and then the hardwoods move in like the birch trees and the and the beach and it looks like it's predominantly birch on the shore and then a lot of the fir mixed in the fir trees beautiful fir trees beautiful mountains they're not very high but I was over there with my snowmobile the other day. That's actually where I saw that moose and it was heading up up over that ridge by that mountain there. There's a logging road that you can get to. Probably not much stern for animals. I haven't heard anything yet, red squirrels or birds or anything. I thought I heard a couple ravens the other morning, but I haven't heard anything. When it's going to be like a crazy, crazy cold night, all these animals, the wild animals go into survival mode. So the partridge have burrowed under the snow squirrels all your small stuff burrow right under the snow and make a little cave and it's considerably warmer under there with their body temperature and just a small little cave i don't know what the coyotes do they must do about the same thing or or uh, tuck in real tight like a like a husky would bears are all they're all pretty lazy they've been under since the middle of october they're underground right now in their dens moose are just eating as much as they can deer probably the same and then your predators are either on the prowl or they're hunkered down, one or the other. Okay, we made it back. Pretty awesome day. It's getting really cold. We're at negative 15 right now. It is 5.30. I'm about to try to get these boots and bibs off. I got quite a mess going on down here with froze up. And then I'm going to hit the shower, which means normally it means some warmed up baby wipes, but... I got the wet ones, wet wipes today, and they're frozen, so they need to get warmed up. You could either heat up some water and do it that way, or just put it in front of the, the heater, but I highly advise if you're going to take a winter camping shower like that to warm up the wipes first, because you're going into some pretty sensitive areas with a cold wipe. Whew, that's pretty refreshing. That'll keep you up for a couple hours. <laughs> all in all fantastic day on the ice nine musky caught nine that's this many musky today and i still have all of my fingers half a thumb that trick kills at the ice cream shop yeah just amazing day yesterday i got skunked happens you know i had a couple chances today smashed them <laughs> caught two jigging which is absolutely awesome for me jig in with a with a piece of live bait let's just change that around i caught two on a jig rod which is pretty much awesome i got to see him come in on the pan pan optics first you know a couple of things i wasn't sure of yesterday were you know if i could use leaders if the smelts were too big if my hooks were too big and then right away i proved all those wrong i caught i caught uh two on smelts today and lost one on a smelt on the great big sea smelt I caught 
one on fluorocarbon with a great big hook and then the rest of the fish all came on wire leader including the ones on the jig rod so that was a ton of fun so was it location was it the day was it barometric pressure was it the way the wind was blowing whether it was how i picked my nose in the morning who knows <laughs> that's fishing it's going to take a lot more data to come to a real answer in the end but you know i think it was a, a little bit of everything location's always a, a thing i might go a little bit further down that shoreline tomorrow depending on the weather i have no idea which way the wind's gonna blow but i have a feeling it's gonna be pretty cold so i'm not gonna want to get too far away from either this shack or that shack i left that shack right out there should be good i haven't seen a person in oh almost 60 hours now that shack today was like made things crazy comfortable crazy comfortable even that little tiny heater that whatever it's called sunflower buddy heater it doesn't kick out a ton of heat but it was pretty warm in there you know and it was colder outside than i thought and then having that otter xt pro over cabin just to get out of the wind was pretty amazing too so a couple things there were really handy and you know i made over an inch of ice today in the holes an inch a full inch in not even a half day in those holes that i drilled this morning and in the shack i hardly ever had to move any ice at all there was pretty much no ice inside the shack in those holes so that goes to show the heat that it kept and the heat that that little propane buddy heater kicked out i left that running i don't know how much is left i don't know how long they run on a bottle of propane but i left my bait in there with the aerator going and i left that running inside there so it'll stay heated till it runs out and then the bait's on its own it's kind of a pain in the neck to keep that that bait bucket from freezing up and i don't know if there's a better option or not they say put vaseline around the edges but at this temperature i don't believe anything's going to matter but you got to chip it away to get it to close and then the latches close i guess if you try to crimp those latches down there's any ice in by that seal i guess they're going to break from what my buddies tell me and and I, I trust those guys so i try to clean up all the ice around it so it can seal tight and then you're not spilling as much water as you're riding from trap to trap but aren't those musky absolutely gorgeous they're so beautiful that green that emerald green and tiger maple mixed together is just out of this world and i just can't get over how strong they are they are they make a pike look like a a pickerel because they're they fight easily three times their weight compared to a pike and a pike fights pretty hard in my opinion but the muskie just fights so hard with shakes and yanks and not as much runs as like a pike does but just sheer power pulling and shaking is crazy you almost think they're going to knock themselves out when you get them in the hole and they're still rattling their head back and forth off that inside of that hole with 20 inches of ice it's kind of funny but awesome day thanks for tuning in i am at camp i am gonna derobe get the boots starting to thaw out my feet are dry inside which is nice and warm and take that shower and then we'll talk about dinner and hopefully you guys stick around for the camping part of it too guys that is probably the best cheese i've ever had in my life let me see if i can find out local milk and maple cream collaboration with hill farms maple products conantacres.com conant acres.com c-o-n-a-n-t acres.com yeah that's the best cheese i've ever had in my life <laughs> if you like a sharp cheddar but it's got a maple taste to it oh man that's about as good as i've had i got it at that meat place at herring brothers where my buddy cat works i shouldn't be bragging up the cheese that they bring in and sell on the side because they do have pretty good meats there but man I wouldn't lie about cheese. I like cheese and that is as good as it gets. Could be because it's 20 below and I'm up here in the wilderness. <laughs> or it could be really good cheese. I'll have to try it downstate sometime and let you know. That'll keep the vampires away. all right we're on snow now for water we've run out of water and what we have left is frozen not a big deal if you guys haven't watched my channel before or seen the other episodes here is a pro tip for you when you're melting snow down to get water is 
Do not melt the yellow snow. It is pee. Get good clean, white pure snow. I could get lake water, but this lake is pretty dirty tannic. I'm not even gonna tell you what the fish do in there. All right, how about some strip lion steak? Nice, that'll be some good deer steak. Looks pretty, pretty good. That's got some white still on it. Oh, we got Ronnie. My buddy Kurt didn't cut this up or else it wouldn't have any of that silver on it. Let's take a peek at this piece right here. Oh yeah, about perfect. She's still bleeding, still pink and bloody. That is gonna hit the spot. Have a look at that masterpiece. Not bad. <laughs> That looks pretty edible to me. Imagine a fellow would probably give pretty good money for something like that at a store or at a restaurant. I know I would. Might be good night, Irene, after I drive this into me. That was one heck of a dinner. <laughs> Got most of it put away. Couldn't drive those last couple pieces of deer steak into me, so we'll have some steak and eggs in the morning. So there was a topic I talked about a little bit earlier today that I kind of wanted to revisit and go a little bit more in depth on is is like alone time you know and this is the ultimate in alone time here i'm pushing uh what let me think for a sec seven 40 55 55 to 60 hours without even laying eyes on another human let alone being around anyone or having anyone to talk to and i like that you know i don't always like it when i'm downstate I love people. I love being around people. I have a great family. I have great friends and, and I have a great community where I live, but I do like solitude too. And I think it's important for everybody to have a little bit of time to be alone with their thoughts. And it's harder and harder to do nowadays with social media and cell phones and TV and every media you can think of and everything's fast and everything's intertwined now, you know, it's, it's just very few opportunities to have your own thoughts go through your brain without anything touching upon them. You know, whether it be the radio playing in the background or media or just, you know, someone coming over or talking to someone else. Or, and I think a lot of people get it, you know, whether it be jumping on your Harley and taking it for a ride or, you know, going for a ride in a car or or a bike ride or hiking, you know, a lot of people hike. I don't think they hike just for, for the exercise or to see really cool places. I know of a lot of people who hike to get that alone time and really get to be alone with their thoughts. And to actually own your thoughts is something that's really precious in this world. It's, it's one of the last things anyone can ever take away from you, no matter what situation you're in. So coming up here to me and being in the wilderness, whether I was trapping or or ice fishing or hunting, it really means a lot to me. And, and I think it's a good thing to do periodically, if not often, is to be alone with your thoughts and really, really get to know yourself. You know, that's a good way to do it other than just going through the motions day to day. I don't know if that makes any sense or not to you guys. And it's something that I've kind of lived by for a long time now and really enjoyed it. All fishing aside, so far it's been an awesome trip. We're we're negative 19 now. She's still dropping pretty good. It was 14 below zero when I came off of the lake right at dark, and now it's 19 below. I don't know how cold it's going to get tonight. It slowed down quite a bit. I thought it usually just goes woo when it's when it's dropping. She drops in a hurry, but 19 below is nothing to sneeze at, and. We'll probably see a lot colder tonight. I brought in 
a blanket and a half. I'll throw the half underneath me and the full blanket over me. Anytime it gets in that 20 to 30 below zero, I think it's a good idea to have another blanket. And I might even run the heater on low tonight. We'll see. Right now, it's a comfortable 38 degrees in here. You can still see my breath. Well, it's 38 right above the heater. So over here, it's not quite 38. But I want to thank you for tuning in, guys, as always. It's just... It's so much fun for me and the community that's building around the channel is a lot of fun too. You know, all this stuff is mostly just me going out there and working as hard as I can to not only put together a good video, but also get the video filmed and, and all that stuff too and then edited. And I, I enjoy it, you know, and anytime I can pass on what little knowledge I have about fishing to someone else and if it makes their day a little bit better, then, then that's a win for me. And if anybody ever gets some enthusiasm or or inspired to either go winter camping or, or go ice fishing or go ice fishing for a different species or a lake they've never been before or way up in the wilderness, any of that stuff like that, I, I think that's a win if you can inspire someone in life in general. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check back in for tomorrow's episode. Should be another good one, I hope.